Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I promise I'm not only gonna talk about being a mom now. That said, you know, I've been here since I was 20, okay? I've gone through a lot of ebbs and flows and I've uh, kind of touched on all of them throughout the, the years and this is another ebb and I'm fucking flowing through it. I will be uploading my regular content as well. I'm gonna be trying to do a balance of both um, and the postpartum and mom things will always be clearly labeled. So if you don't wanna watch it, you don't have to watch it. And that's all fine and well, we can carry on with our days. Next order of business, someone named Ariel commented and they requested more greenery in the background. So I moved some plants that were on that side of the desk to this side of the desk. And I hope this is pleasurable for your viewing. Now onto this shit, okay? Here's the thing. I said in my last video, I wanna talk about postpartum forever. I keep spinning, I, I, like I can't stop this chair <laughs> from just doing what it's doing right now. I said in my last video that I could talk about postpartum forever and it's truly is something I feel so strongly about because I can't stress enough how much it's not talked about. And I just feel like it's so uncommon to research that aspect of parenthood. I spent so much time researching all about shit throughout pregnancy and stuff like that, which was also difficult because there's so much that they don't tell you during pregnancy as well. They just being general public, I guess. <laughs> I don't know who I'm blaming for this. But I was constantly like, is this normal? Is this normal? Is this normal? Like, is this a pregnancy symptom? Is there like, are my ribs just shattering for no reason? Like what's going on? And then I Googled a lot about labor and delivery. I Googled a lot about like taking care of babies and stuff like that. And like, what is this going to look like? Like, how do I do this? And even that kind of stuff, it's so difficult because there's tons of information out there and almost too much in a way where it's like, you can go down these rabbit holes of just like researching so much stuff and somehow not being any clearer on any of it because, because there's like a lot of anecdotal stuff out there. And like I said in my last video, you can find whatever answer you're looking for. Like if you're wanting to be reassured, you'll find things that can reassure you. If you're wanting to be like scared shitless, you will find things that will scare you shitless. But I found that whenever I was researching stuff, I'd be reading an article about one thing and then in that article it would mention something else that I didn't know anything about and I'd be like, okay, I guess, I guess I'm gonna go research fucking wake windows now. And so I never felt like I was getting ahead in what I was trying to research. And ultimately the disservice when it comes to labor and delivery, I think is that we spend so much time talking about every single aspect of like what could happen. And I, I shouldn't say that's a disservice. It's a disservice to postpartum because I feel like we don't do the same thing there because I feel like we discuss so much of what can happen in labor and delivery. So it doesn't really matter what ends up happening to you because oftentimes like care providers and other people around you that have had kids before have discussed so many different like things that can happen. So you go in sort of prepared for that reason, but I feel like we don't do the same thing about postpartum. So again, it's like, I'm not trying to scare anybody about postpartum because obviously it's worth it. I just wanna do the exact same thing that I feel like we all do with labor and delivery, <laughs> which you might have an experience so different from mine in every single aspect postpartum wise, but I don't know. I just think it's nice to like put experiences out there so if the same thing happens to you, maybe you feel more prepared. If the thing doesn't happen to you, maybe you can be more empathetic to other people that it does happen to, you know? I don't know. I don't think this is a bad thing. I don't know. So anyway, someone requested that I talk about the first 24 hours postpartum, and I'm going to extend that to the first week because I feel like the first 24 hours are really um, just sort of you getting acclimated to like still being alive somehow after going through this. So let's let's talk about it, let's dive in. So my whole first day I was in the hospital. So I think that's fairly customary, at least in Canada, that you would spend the first 24 hours in the hospital. Um, they like you to be there for at least that time because they're going to do tests on your baby uh, at the like 24 hour mark. So the first day um, gave birth at 10, 27 PM. It was nighttime. <laughs> Everyone packed up shop and fucking went home. I was just laying in my bed. I was trying to learn how to breastfeed. Um, and so that was kind of like the first few hours was like they were doing some like tests and measurements and all that kind of crap on the baby. And then in between there, I'd be trying to breastfeed. For some reason, my arms really hurt. Like I did have an IV in and stuff, but, um, and they had taken blood as well. But yeah, my arms were just like in a lot of pain for some reason. So I was really struggling to hold the baby. And also they wanted me to be like more upright, like in kind of like more of like a 90 degree angle <laughs> sitting like position. And I found that really painful because me being more upright meant that I was putting more pressure on my stitches. And if you didn't watch my last video, um, basically I had two tears. I had an internal tear and an external tear. Um, 
so the internal tear was obviously internal and the external tear was near the very top of my vagina. Um, and then I also had an episiotomy. So I had stitches just like all over the place. So I wanted to be like more laid back because that was what was more comfortable. But then it was just kind of like hard because my arms hurt so bad and I couldn't get into like a good position to breastfeed properly. And so there wasn't a lot of support breastfeeding wise at the hospital. The lactation consultant had already gone home. Um, and at some point, I think it was one of the nurses that was just like, oh, you should try side lying position. So that would just be where like I'm laying on my side, the baby's laying on their side. Um, and you just kind of like flop your boob out <laughs> and that's how you're breastfeeding. And I felt like I was able to get the baby on that way, like latched on. And I was like, okay, like this is a position that works. I thought. So that was the first few hours. We did try to like get a little bit of sleep kind of thing, but I felt really anxious because I just felt like I had this new like breakable baby and they put the baby in like a little bassinet that was like far enough away from me that I couldn't like reach it and grab it to like pull the baby over. And I couldn't get out of bed or walk yet because I had had an epidural. And so I just felt really anxious and newborns are so noisy when they breathe. Like they're like, <laughs> Like it's like <laughs> the worst. Like we were like, is is the baby fine? Like why is it making so much noise? But, but I mean, they're just stuffed up. They're just breathing in like water and pee for nine months. So I don't know. Anyways, um, so I was just kind of like anxious and I couldn't sleep well. The next morning, um, I a nurse came in and she was like, okay, let's try and stand up and see like if you can walk up. So I stood up and she had like my little like IV tower thing, and I was like trying to hold onto that, and I like stood up okay and I was like oh okay I'm fine and I took like one step and I was like oh fuck <laughs> no I'm not fine um and I like my knees came out and I was like oh okay cool I, it's, I don't have control over my legs quite yet um so I took a little rest laid back down and then I couldn't walk until that afternoon so when I could finally get up and walk I hobbled my way to the bathroom and it was at that point that I realized how truly disgusting I was my baby took a light dump inside of my body um, and came out with like a little poo swirl on its head. And, um, and then they put the baby onto my chest, obviously, so that I could be like, oh, cute baby. That's what just came out of me. Cool. Looks great. 10 fingers, 10 toes. Awesome. And then took the baby away, toweled them off, presumably. I don't know, I was sitting there being stitched up and birthing a placenta. But anyways, um, I when I got to the bathroom, I just realized that I was like covered in poop, covered in blood. And I was like, oh wow, I'm um, truly a trash bag. And I kind of was like a little surprised they like left me like that. I was like, wow, you guys really left me fucking hanging with some poop and blood on me, but okay. But you know, they're busy and that's fine and well. And um, I, just sat on the toilet and tried to give myself like a wet wipe bath as best I could. I tried to like wipe off as much as I possibly could. And then I got changed out of the gown that I was wearing into like a new one because it was also covered in shit, literally, and blood. This was something where I saw a lot of like hospital bag videos where they were like, ooh, get like a comfy like dress. That, like, like they were recommending all these different like comfy clothes. No, I would never want to wear any of that. You're covered in like the grossest shit ever. Like I wanted to be wearing a hospital gown. <laughs> I didn't want to be wearing like a nice cute like nighty or anything like that. Like I just was like, no, let me like just really be immersed in the medical experience of this all. I'm realizing now as well that like I don't remember them ever putting a pad on me or anything like that. But when I went to the bathroom, I realized that like the pad that I was wearing was actually like, it looked like a puppy pee pad that someone had like put into thirds like hot dog style <laughs> and I was just wearing like the disposable underwear and then this like puppy pad thing and I, I was like trying to pull up the underwear and the pad at the same time so that the pad wouldn't like flip over or like do anything weird I was like trying to keep it all lined up it was so weird and then we Matt was chomping at the bed to get out of the hospital because he hadn't really slept they didn't have a bed for him obviously he was just like oh like let's go and it, it was kind of like I don't know if any of you have ever traveled while you're sick, but for me in that experience, it's like, I just want to be home with like all the things that I like know are there. Like I know where my Tylenol is. I know I can take a bath. I know I can like go do, I could put on my like comfy socks. Like I can do all the things to like make myself feel better basically and be like in my kind of space. And I was having that feeling, but I was also scared to leave the hospital because I was like, what if something happens? And like, I don't know how to like fix it. Like what if something happens with the baby? What if something happens with me? Like I had some anxiety 
anxiety around that. And the other thing as well is that um, throughout the whole day, there was students coming in and out of my room, which I want to preface this with saying, I understand why this happens and like the necessity for it. It doesn't change the fact that it was so uncomfortable. <laughs> I just was like so tired and I was trying to get my bearings of like what I was going through. And I also felt so insecure in everything that I was doing because like, because again, like most of my day was spent learning to breastfeed. Um, and so I felt like I looked stupid and like I didn't know what I was doing and stuff like that because obviously I didn't, but it was just like, it was such a like zoo animal feeling of like having all of these like students coming in and out watching what I was doing and stuff. Finally, we got discharged um, that following night at 1030. And someone pointed this out on my last video. They were like, it's crazy that they send you home without telling you basically anything about like how to like care for yourself. And I'm sure that's not everybody's experience, but I was asking Matt because again, like I was in a fucking haze. I was like, did they tell me anything? Cause I don't remember them telling me anything. He was like, no. And so what that leads to is again, Googling everything <laughs> and coming to your own conclusions, which is almost always inconclusive because there is so much anecdotal evidence that it's kind of just like, I don't know, like there's some people saying this is not normal at all. There's some people saying that this is completely normal and fine, whatever. And I felt like oddly insecure to like call my midwife about things because I was just like, I don't wanna like waste their time. Like I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure I'm normal, whatever kind of thing. But there's a lot of things that are just like so scary that are happening to you. It's just, it's such a bizarre experience. So anyways, first night home was the second day postpartum and the pediatrician when we were talking about breastfeeding had told me that um i have to feed the baby every two to three hours one thing that i want to say and again maybe this is obvious to others but it wasn't obvious to me was that we were supposed to be timing the two to three hours from the start of the last feed not the end it's really like potentially an hour or like an hour and a half or at most like two hours between feeds, not two to three hours between feeds. And that makes a world of fucking difference when you're waking up like every two hours or every hour and a half or every hour at night to feed because it's like usually in the beginning, like these feeding sessions don't take like 10 minutes. You know what I mean? It's like, you're still learning how to feed. The baby's still learning how to feed. I'm not very good at it. They're not fucking very good at it either, to be honest. And the baby will fall asleep sometimes. So you're like trying to wake the baby up. Like sometimes they'll fall off and you have to like lash them back on. It's like, it's just like such a process and it ends up taking a really long time. Like you can be sitting sometimes for like an hour trying to get the speed completed. And I want to add that in because I think that that also added to um, my baby having lost more weight than it was supposed to in the beginning because I didn't fucking know. And at first, for the first few days, I was timing it from the end of my last feed until my next feed. Um, but at that point, waking up every two to three hours. I just remember sitting there in like the dead of night being like, is this my life now? <laughs> like, and I want to have multiple kids. So I'm like, am I like, is this really what I'm going to be doing? And I just had this feeling of like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like, this is crazy. That time is relatively short. So just hang in there. <laughs> but it's hard. It's like a, it's a rude awakening. The first full day that we were home as well, we had um, family wanting to come see the baby and stuff like that, which didn't actually bother me personally. A lot of people don't want family or friends or anything like that coming to see the baby in the first few weeks, which I completely understand. And I think it's like really important to set your boundaries around if that's like something you're not ready for, because it is just like stressful and you're trying to get um, used to things. And um, I completely understand not wanting family there. My family is so chill and like understanding and patient and stuff like that, that like it didn't bother me to have them there. The only thing that I felt like was really stressful in those first few weeks with people visiting was like trying to time people visiting with feeding the baby and the baby napping and all that kind of stuff because like I wanted them to come at like the like supreme time where the baby would be like the least fussy and like the least in need of something. The second day home was when I had my first appointment with that midwife that I didn't know. Um, and she told me that the baby had lost too much weight. I needed a supplement, blah, blah, blah. I have that whole story in my last video if you guys wanna to listen to that, but I'm not gonna make you guys sit through it again. But I wanted to kind of make you sit through it again in that <laughs> I wanted to talk more about why that experience was so devastating. Part of why I was so upset about it was because I couldn't 
really move around or do anything at the time. So I felt like the only way I could care for my baby was by breastfeeding and I couldn't even do that. Like that wasn't working, you know what I mean? I felt like I couldn't do anything for my baby. And the other thing as well is that like that was the way that I felt like I was able to bond with my baby the most and I'll get into that more in a second. I asked Matt if there was anything that stuck out to him in the first like week postpartum. And it was interesting because he said that he felt guilty and like insecure that he wasn't doing enough and that he wasn't like able to like do anything for the baby because he wasn't breastfeeding. <laughs> like he felt like he, like I felt like he was doing everything because I was like, I can't do anything but breastfeed and I'm not even doing that right. Um, but he felt like because he wasn't breastfeeding and because he hadn't gone through this experience of like giving birth to our child that, um, that he wasn't like doing enough. And like, that's what he ended up feeling really secure, insecure and guilty about because he was like watching me go through this and he couldn't, that was all he could do is watch, you know? Um, so it was just interesting that we were kind of like simultaneously feeling insecure about not being able to care enough for this baby. <laughs> when like, obviously we were both doing our part and like things are fine. But jumping back to that being the way that I felt most connected to my baby. I wanted to touch on this because I feel like this is something that so many people feel guilty about and that's not immediately feeling connected to their child. This is like by far the worst part of parenthood is like this stigma, parenthood and pregnancy, honestly, it's like the stigma of like how you should be feeling and how things should be looking for you. On top of the fact that it's like everybody is, judging your choices no matter what choice you're making it's not the right one <laughs> in somebody else's eyes i hate that so much because it's like not only is it like reasonable and realistic for you to not immediately feel connected to this like infant that you just met that has no way of like interacting with you like they can't smile they can't laugh they can't talk to you they can't like do anything to show you that like they're connected to you, you know what I mean? And so that's really difficult. And it's um, a lot of the times really difficult for the partner that didn't um, give birth, especially because they don't even have that experience of having carried that child. And so I know for Matt, like he feels a lot more connected to our baby now that um, the baby can smile and laugh and do all of those things. But it's just so unfair that like, while healing from this huge trauma to your body, while being sleep deprived, while trying to learn what you're doing, you're also feeling guilty about the fact that your innermost feelings <laughs> that truly don't have to be presented to anybody if you don't want them to are not aligned with what people are telling you should be happening. So anyways, that was another reason that I was just like really upset by the whole breastfeeding debacle of 2021, okay? Um, on that third day postpartum, I also, that was when I tried to take my first shower um, and almost passed out, but everything was fine. The third day home, the fourth day postpartum was when this angel midwife descended into my home and changed things forever. She was the one that showed me how to breastfeed properly. And truly, like, I cannot express my gratitude towards that woman, she just, literally like waltzed into my home, fixed all of my problems, <laughs> made me feel so much more confident, like actually sat there and answered my questions. Because another thing that I found really frustrating, um, I really liked the process of having like a midwife and a doula and stuff like that. Um, and I would certainly like recommend it to people, but something that I found frustrating with a lot of the people that I spoke to, whether it was like doctors, pediatricians, um, nurses at the hospital, it's my midwife sometimes, my doula sometimes was that I would ask a question and they would like give me the information but not their opinion on it, which I can understand and that's probably like the best way to do things. But it was just getting to a point where it was like, I have so many questions and like nobody can just definitively say like, well, this is what I would do or like, this is what I think is best or whatever kind of thing. Like it was just like, here's like, <sighs> the information and I don't know like it was just like I just wanted someone to say like yeah that's okay like if that's what you want to do that's okay that's what I just wanted so badly and so this midwife was really like just unabashed in just telling me exactly what she thought about whatever it was that I was asking her about um and it made me feel so much more secure in just like doing what I needed to do and what felt best for me as a parent um, and also for myself. And so after she left, I just felt so much better. Oh my God, it was like ridiculous. 
Um, and I felt so much more confident going into breastfeeding and stuff like that. And I was um, a lot more patient uh, while I was trying to get the baby to latch and stuff because previously it was like, I would just get so frustrated and so upset that I was like, I couldn't like, just be like, okay, that's fine. Like, you know what? We're not latching right this second. Let's try again in a couple of minutes. I love breastfeeding now. <laughs> like it was such a tumultuous thing in the beginning and I completely understand why people don't want to breastfeed or stop breastfeeding or whatever kind of thing. I completely get it. It's hard. It hurts. Like I would be in so much pain. I would be like crying while I was breastfeeding because it was so painful. Um, and a lot of what I was reading online, which was also frustrating was that, um, breastfeeding shouldn't be painful in what world can you have someone suckling on your boob ineffectively for hours every single day when was that not going to hurt <laughs> like you have to build up a little bit of a fucking tolerance there you know what i mean goddamn like <laughs> jesus like it was just it was bizarre to me to read that. And I just, I, I can't imagine that there's any one person on this planet who truly has never felt any pain while breastfeeding. Like it certainly gets to a place where it doesn't hurt at all, or at least that's how it has been for me. But what the fuck? Like there's no way that I refuse to believe it. I refuse to believe that. So it was hard to not feel like I was like losing my confidence around that because I was like, why is it still hurting? Why is it still hurting? Um, but anyways, breastfeeding was really difficult. But now I love it so much. I feel so connected to my baby breastfeeding. I love that it's like just this opportunity to step away from whatever the day is looking like and sit there and just be with my child for however long kind of thing. Um, and now we're at a point where the baby only wakes up once a night to feed. And I just can't help but smile while I'm nursing them in the middle of the night because it's just like, oh, they're just so cute and sweet. And they just like stare into your eyes. Like it's just like the sweetest thing ever. Like I just, oh my God, it's, it's, it's the best. Like I, I truly, I truly love it so much. And so I'm so glad that it worked out for me, but I just wanna say if you're breastfeeding and you're not enjoying it and you want to quit, you can do that. You do not have to breastfeed. There's so many other options out there. Formula is like light years ahead of where it used to be. There's nothing wrong with it at all. There's nothing wrong with pumping if you wanna pump. It doesn't matter what you're doing as long as your baby is properly fed. And if you really, really, really wanna breastfeed and it hasn't been working for you, but you don't wanna give up, there are options there as well. There's lactation consultants that could come to your home. Like there, there are options to help you around that kind of stuff. Um, so all of that to say, whatever you wanna be doing, you can find a way to do it and you shouldn't feel guilty about making that decision. I did have a brief time, um, like I mentioned in the last video where the baby would only feed on one side um, and it did help immensely and I still only feed on one side at each feed, um, which a lot of you had pointed out as well. Having the nurse on the one side only can be beneficial because they're getting more of the hind milk, which like the foremilk is more watery and it's like hydrating and stuff like that, but the hind milk is like um, more like fatty and, and calorie dense. So if you're only feeding on the one side, then they're, you're ensuring that they're getting a lot of that hind milk kind of thing. So anyways, that helped a lot. There was that week where the baby would only feed on one side and I tried nipple shields at that point. Um, and you're continually having to go back in to either like your pediatrician or midwife or whatever to weigh the baby and to like make sure that everything's going fine. Um, and I had taken the baby in after I'd started using the nipple shields, which like the nipple shields just look like the top of like a bottle. Like it just has like this weird plastic nipple thing. You just put it over top of yours and then it protects your nipple. <laughs> and it also makes it easier for the baby to latch on. But I had started using those and I felt like the baby again was like eating great. And I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. It doesn't hurt as much anymore. It's so much easier to latch the baby on. This is like awesome. Like this is perfect. I like found the way forward. No, anything that makes it easier, it's basically like, it's a no, <laughs> or that was my experience. Um, so I took the baby in after I'd started using the nipple shield and the baby had started losing weight again or no, hadn't started losing weight, but wasn't gaining as much as they had been gaining because um, I had, after the issue that I had with breastfeeding in the beginning, I had gotten to a point where the baby was gaining like 52 grams a day. So they were gaining weight really well. And then after I started using the nipple shields, it had gone down to like 20 grams a day. Um, and they were like, the baby needs to be gaining more than that. Like what changed? And I was like, well, I started using these nipple shields. And um, one thing that was interesting too, is that like, 
So I was using a, after I stopped doing the side lying position because that wasn't working for me anymore. And the first, the second midwife that came was like, oh, try like cross cradle. And that was what we were doing. And that was the position I started using exclusively after that. Um, and I would use this breast friend pillow, which is just like a foamy pillow thing that you like clip on around you and the baby lays on. Um, and I had only ever breastfed with that. I had never like breastfed while well, like just like holding my baby. Um, and so when I went to my midwife and she was like, what changed? And I was like, I'm using these nipple shields, blah, 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 because like the only nurse on the one side and it was really painful. Um, and then she was like, well, can I watch you breastfeed? And I said no, because I was so insecure about the fact that I was like, I don't know how to breastfeed while holding my baby. <laughs> like, like I don't have like a, I don't have my breast friend pillow here. So no, I can't breastfeed in front of you. I didn't say that. I didn't say that I didn't have my breast friend pillow, but I was just like, oh no, I think it's fine. Like I'll just, you know, figure it out without the nipple shields. Like, <laughs> and it's just like, it's so weird because that was something that I was also really insecure about with like going into public for the first time with my baby because I was like I don't want people to look at me it's like going to the gym for the first time when you're like I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with this machine like what I just put this shit between my fucking legs and squish my legs together and suddenly I have fucking stacked calves like I don't know about this man like it's just like it, I, I felt so insecure going into public with my baby because I was like, I don't want people to look at me and know that I don't know what I'm doing. So I had to stop using the nipple shields. It was fine in the end, but damn. Oh, also, since I filmed my last video, I said in my last video that it still hurts to this day feeding on the one side that I had that week that they would only feed on that side. It did stop hurting recently. The breastfeeding shit aside, I could go on for years, but... Um, Another thing that I was experiencing in my first week postpartum is that I was afraid to eat. I didn't want to eat too much because I was afraid to poop. I did talk about this in my last video as well. Um, and once I took stool softener, it was, whoa, fine as a stretch. I took a lot of stool softener. I took stool softener for like three days before I actually did take my first poop. Um, and it was okay when I finally did, but I was fucking scared. I told my midwife that I was scared to poop and she was like, just like fold up, it's like fine. Like usually it's like anticlimactic, just like fold up paper towel, hold it against your perineum so you feel like, okay, gives you like confidence that like you're not gonna like split in half or something. It was still so scary, so I was scared to eat too much. <laughs> One other thing is that I constantly felt dirty um, because I was just like covered in breast milk that was leaking all over me all the time. Again, possibly because I was wearing my breast pads backwards. I don't know. One thing that I would say is to keep like towels or like burp cloths or something nearby to like soak up all of the milk that is like pouring out of your orifices at all times. It's not pouring out of your orifices, it's pouring out of your nipples only, presumably. <laughs> I don't know what you got going on over there. But I just felt so sticky and dirty and I smelled bad. Like you. I smell worse now than I ever have in my entire life. Like I'm not like a real sweater at the best of times. And when I do sweat, it's like usually never smelled except for when I first switched to natural deodorant and I was using this one brand and it made me stink like a fucking trucker. Um, but <clears throat> I moved on from that point in my life and I'm back to smelling fresh and clean, but I'm not now. I was, and now I'm not because I'm postpartum. Now I stink. Like a trucker, again, I don't know what happened to me, um, but that's something that just happens. Sometimes you just get stinkier after having a kid. And you also sweat like crazy. Like I would wake up like drenched in sweat in the middle of the night. I'm using the term wake up lightly, obviously, because I wasn't really sleeping in general at all, but y you understand. You have like so much excess fluid in your body. And then once you're postpartum, it starts expelling out of every pore on your body, it feels like. So that fourth day, I took another shower and I was feeling really weird before I took my shower. Like I was just feeling kind of like, ooh, like I'm just having like a drop of depression here. Like what's going on? Um, and then I got into the shower and I felt like I wasn't real. Like I can't even explain it better than that. I literally just like, I felt like so disconnected from my body. It was such a bizarre thing. And I just sat there in the shower and cried and tried to like remind myself like, you know, you're going through all these hormonal changes. Like you're just, that's just what this is. It's fine. Um, but a lot of people ask me about like how my mental health was and stuff like that and how it's been. And it's actually been great. I was surprised when I started talking about 
choosing to stay on my medication, how many people reached out to me saying that they were scared to have kids because they have like depression or anxiety or some other type of mental illness um, and that they felt like they couldn't have kids for that reason. But hopefully that's encouraging for some of you. Um, I don't feel like my depression has come back in any significant way. Like I've definitely had hard times and I've struggled with things throughout my postpartum experience, um, but not in a way where I'm like, oh, this is like a depression, depression like episode, which this is something so interesting as well is like, I feel like you can't complain. I mean, obviously you can, but like when you complain when you're postpartum, it's like there's stigma around that because like you should be enjoying this and like, and people will brush it off as like, but it's worth it. And it's like, yeah, like I can't tell you how many fucking articles I read about whatever it was that I was experiencing. And the article would end with like, but it's worth it for your perfect little babe. And it's like, I don't need this being said to me. Like, I just don't. Like I can come to that conclusion all on my own. I just need the answer to my query, okay? But I also feel like anytime, not anytime, I'm generalizing, but I also feel like if I said that I was feeling fine, I would have a lot of people being like, just you wait. Those are three words that kill me. Like, I, I, I hate the just you waits of it all because it's just like, everyone has a different experience. And I might have that experience in the future after waiting, or I might not. And I felt like when I would say to people that I was feeling good, they were like, mm, just you wait, just you wait. Like you won't be <laughs> like, you're just riding the high of like having had your baby, but like, just wait until two weeks, just wait until three weeks, just wait until four weeks. I'm 16 weeks postpartum. Um, and I do genuinely feel great. Um, I'm going to preface this with saying we lucked out with a very, very, very chill baby that sleeps a lot, that cries very little, and is all around very cute. So I do think that that's made my experience easier. Um, the days that I am alone with the baby, <sighs> there does not exist enough credit in this world for single parents. I cannot even imagine being alone with a baby for like eight hours is a lot. I feel very burnt out at the end of the day. It's really hard to like maintain patience and stuff like that. So the days that Matt has to work and he's out of the house are a lot more difficult for me. Um, and I find that I have to be like really gentle with myself on those days because I at first was kind of like pressuring myself like, okay, I need to be better at like, I should be getting stuff done around the house and stuff like that. But it's like, it's so hard to explain because it seems like there's nothing really going on, but it's just like impossible to do things. <laughs> And, and something that I found interesting the further along in my postpartum journey that I get is that right when I first had my baby, people were like, oh, take your time and don't worry. Like you can get that back to me whenever, like it's fine, it's fine. Cause I didn't really, I, I took a maternity leave from YouTube in a way in that like I wasn't actively filming videos um, the way that I normally would. <laughs> When have I ever been consistent? Let's be honest. But I was still working, um, doing Auric and stuff like that behind the scenes <clears throat> and then doing the stuff for my YouTube and like Instagram that I had to do. Um, but in the beginning, people were so like, oh, take your time, take your time kind of thing. But if anything, I feel like the older the baby has gotten, the harder it's been to care for them in that like they are more social now. So they want more attention. They want you to be like looking at them and playing with them and stuff like that. Um, and it's great and it's fun, but it's also like impossible to get shit done. And I feel like obviously at some point people are going to be like, okay, like it, it doesn't matter that you have a baby, like you need to work and get things done. I feel like now is when I need that <laughs> patience more than ever from people. And it's like the opposite anyways. So jumping back to, um, I do feel like it's easier to maintain, um, a more like healthy mental space because our baby is so easy to care for. And I think that's another thing that I want to stress is that if you're not feeling happy, if you are experiencing depression or anxiety or anything else, if you're struggling with that side of things, it's completely understandable. And there are options around that. There is help around that. And just know that like you experiencing those things doesn't make you inherently like a bad parent. Um, it's just hard. 
it's just a difficult time. A lot of people are asking about like what your body looks like <laughs> postpartum and I'm leaving this to the end for a reason and that's because I hate how much emphasis we put on specifically women's bodies postpartum. Um, it is just a real shame that it's such a focus and I don't mean that I don't like there to be focus around it in a support type of way because I know that that's something that is very commonly struggled with. Um, and I think that we should be talking about it in that capacity of like support and normalizing it. I just don't like the emphasis of like bouncing back or that you should have to bounce back at any point, let alone immediately following giving birth. Just to talk a little bit about like the, the changes my body went through, um, immediately following um, having given birth, um, I looked like I was like maybe like three months, no, probably more like five months pregnant. Um, but just like my belly was like squishy. Um, and that was kind of like what my body looked like for, I would say like the first like week and a half. And then like slowly my, um, your like uterus kind of like goes back down a little bit. And now I would say my body looks more or less like it did pre-pregnancy. I weigh a little bit more like single digits more than I did pre-pregnancy. But I will say this, even though I'm close to my pre-pregnancy weight, almost all of my pre-pregnancy clothes don't fit me because like my body is just different now. It's just like, there's like extra inches in different places and stuff like that. So it's something that I try to put very little emphasis on. And that's not to say that I haven't had moments of feeling insecure because of course I have. Um, and you know, my skin, what a bitch is still not clear. <laughs> I was like, why, when, when, is this, when am I gonna have my dues paid? Okay, I fucking have clocked in for years now and I just needed to like let it fucking go. But anyways, I've had of course like feelings of insecurity and stuff like that, but I try to pay, place really little emphasis and importance around um, what my body looks like. And I'm just allowing it to take the time it needs to like heal and I'm not putting pressure on myself to go jump back into a fitness, <laughs> back into a fitness routine. I'm not <laughs> to jump into a fitness routine. That's not what I'm prioritizing making time for personally. My main priority is like just really trying to like soak in this whole time and experience that I have while my baby's this young before it can be old enough to tell me it hates me. I just, the injustices against women, I could go on forever. I hate this idea that your body has to stay the same through all of these different periods of life. And specifically, it's like we're yearning for this body that we had when we were like teenagers or like very young adults. But why are we expecting that when your body is going through so many changes as an adult, um, physically and hormonally and all this kind of stuff. And also like your, your lifestyle changes. Like you don't have the same lifestyle now that you had when you were like in your early twenties or when you were a teenager or whatever, and especially not after you have a kid. And so I just, I don't know, it's such a like disservice to, um, focus so much on like getting your body back and stuff like that. And again, I don't mean that in the way of like, if that's something you're struggling with, that's completely fucking valid. And I understand it wholeheartedly. I just hate that like our society places emphasis on that. So that was kind of like the least of my concerns. Honestly, <laughs> I kind of liked how my belly looked immediately postpartum because I immediately missed being pregnant um, <laughs> once I had had my child, um, especially with the whole breastfeeding thing. I was like, oh my God, like I, I wish I could just, when I was pregnant, I wanted so badly to like have the baby out of my body so that I could take care of it because I was like, I don't know what's going on. Like, like if there was days near the end of my pregnancy where um, the baby felt like it wasn't moving as much or something like that, I would like panic and feel like, okay, like, is something going on? Like, I don't know. I can't just like go get an ultrasound and make sure everything's fine, like on a whim. Um, and I hated it so much. And I was like, I just want this baby out so I can care for it. And then when the breastfeeding thing was happening, I was like, I wish I could put my baby back in my belly because I knew it was cared for. <laughs> like I knew it was getting food and nutrients and whatever. And I was like doing that right, you know? So it just felt like a cute little, I don't know, a cute little baby bump. I kind of liked it. So teach their own. I wanna to touch on being pregnant a little bit and then I'll wrap this up until fucking next time. But a lot of people ask me like, do you like being a mom? Because like you were pretty neutral about pregnancy. <laughs> like, And a lot of people um, were mad. <laughs> You're mad. A lot of people were mad about 
me being neutral towards pregnancy. Um, and I was like wholeheartedly, I was neutral towards pregnancy. Like I started feeling a little bit more connected, um, in, in the end when I could this hold. I started feeling a little more connected in the end when I could like feel my baby like kicking and having hiccups and stuff like that. Um, but I was pretty neutral towards pregnancy and I don't feel bad about it. Here's why I had no context of what it would be like having a baby. <laughs> like just the idea that you have to be ecstatic constantly about being pregnant when like you're going through so many changes and so many weird things that you're like, is this fucking normal what's happening right now? Like it's so much anxiety. It's so much like unknown. And it's like the fear of trying to figure it all out before, like you have this timeline that's like, it's coming to a close at some point, you know that. And it's like trying to figure out everything that you feel like you need to figure out before the baby is here and all that kind of stuff. Like it's just, it's, it's such a stressful thing. And it's, it's so bizarre that people expect you to be like ecstatic constantly while you're pregnant. It's not that my pregnancy was unplanned. It's not that I didn't want a baby. I've always wanted kids my whole life. It's just that I didn't yet feel connected to my baby. So I didn't feel connected really to being pregnant that much. And I don't think that anybody has to feel bad about that. Like I now, Oh my God, when Kylie Jenner announced she was pregnant, I was like, I'm so jealous. I want 800 kids, okay? I feel like my next pregnancy, potentially, I could be wrong, but I feel like my next pregnancy, I'll have the opportunity to enjoy more because I do have context of like, how much I love my baby, how much I like being a mom, um, and I'll feel more connected to it because I'll know what's going on and I won't be as fearful about the things that I don't know. I think there will still be lots of anxiety and stuff around the things that you can't control, obviously that you are hoping are not going wrong inside of your body. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just so, it's such a funny, weird thing. Anyways, someone told me that I was gonna be a bad mom. Sit on it. I made an Instagram post talking about how I felt like it's like oddly taboo to say you're like a good parent but we sit and like shit on ourselves constantly about like all the things that we feel like we're doing wrong and all the ways in which we're a failure and like why we aren't good moms or whatever. And then I would feel like I couldn't like celebrate any wins because I would either have the people being like, just you wait, or I would feel bad like as if I wasn't, as if celebrating the things that were working for me was me not being empathetic to people that weren't experiencing the same wins kind of thing. But I really want to commit to not allowing that to be a thought process in my mind. I want to allow myself to know and believe that like I'm a good parent to my baby and you're a good parent to yours, presumably. I just hate this idea that the only way that you're a good parent is if you're questioning whether or not you are. <laughs> but anyways, I have had a lot of people message me saying that like they're pregnant and they're worried that they're not gonna enjoy motherhood because they also feel like neutral towards their pregnancy like I did. Um, I feel like it was definitely a progression. Like I feel like as time goes on, I feel more and more strongly about being a mom. Something I was really worried about was that being like my whole identity was that like I would only be a mom and that was like all people would see me as and stuff like that. And I have those moments here and there um, where I feel like, you know, people don't ask me to do stuff as much because like they know I have a baby and I'm just like, okay, well, <laughs> you know, I can still leave my home. Being a mom is very all encompassing. It does travel with me wherever I go, but it really has been a great experience. It's been terrifying and exciting and fun and heartbreaking and everything in between. And I still pee my pants a little bit when I sneeze or laugh or walk up the stairs too rapidly. It's a beautiful, magical thing. Anyways, that's it for today. Um, I am going to have more videos talking about this. I'm so sorry. You don't have to watch them if you don't want to, but goddamn, I can't stop talking about it. Like it's definitely something that I feel very strongly about. <laughs> um, and when I was immediately postpartum, I'm not leaving apparently. Um, when I was immediately postpartum, I was saying to Matt that I was like, oh my God, like all I want to do is like talk about this on YouTube, but I'm also so scared to talk about this on YouTube because I feel like people are so judgmental, but it's just like, it's such a fucking, I feel like it's like a waste of this platform to like not talk about these things because like it's, this is fucking crazy lunatic shit that like is happening right now. And I want 
I want people to fucking know. <laughs> like, I want to talk about this so badly. So anyways, I will have more videos on this in the future. I will also have other content, don't worry. I feel like you're probably not worried if you watch till the end of this video anyways, but that said, see you guys next time. Thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>